In the uh, IRS uh, project, I have you know, set up a project with uh, Dr. Hallett uh, that's more focused on the isolation and purification of the extracellular vesicles. I play a role as a principal investigator to supervise the student from the U.S. I actually started as nursing and realized that I wanted to do more with medication and less uh, hospital work, so I actually changed my major to chemistry based on that. I'm mostly interested in medicine. My research mainly focuses on uh, biomaterials, but now we're doing something completely different, something I have absolutely no experience in. So, you know, it'll be fun to kind of pave my own way uh, with the other members of the lab. I do research in the area of biomedical technology. I do look specifically at the nanobio interface, how nanoparticles interact with different molecules like proteins, uh, carbohydrates, um, DNA, and how we can make use of these interactions to perform various biological applications such as disease detection or therapy, etc. This year we want to kind of focus a little bit more on the hands-on lab experience with the students. I've always been kind of interested in chemistry and I just think that this major kind of lets me make things and it's the big picture of production and stuff like that. I think I want to go into a career with biomedical research so I'm hoping that the IRES program will give me a lot of experience towards that. What I think is the most important about our research project is that it is interdisciplinary. The biologists might have found a cure for a disease, but they don't know how to scale that up to a level that we could actually treat people with. I really enjoy chemistry and all the math, and being able to see all that chemistry and math and all the science kind of get built up onto like a large scale, like processes and factories, is just very fascinating. They've seen that these things called extracellular vesicles, which are just basically these little kind of circular shaped things, are floating around in your cardiovascular system. And they can be used as a potential biomarker to detect heart disease better. In Dr. Wang's lab, they're just trying to isolate these extracellular vesicles in order to further kind of elucidate their actual purpose. They purify the extracellular vesicles using dextran and they want to find a better method to purify the extracellular vesicles so that way they can better study them. So what we're doing is we're using a method that Dr. Helt's lab pioneered that was used on viruses. They use these things called osmolites, which encourage the particles in solution to aggregate or flocculate into larger particles that can be then separated out through standard filtration. So the research project that I'm working on is nonspecific virus detection with gold nanoparticles. Basically what we do is we synthesize these different size and shape gold nanoparticles and we're trying to figure out what works best to optimize the process of detecting whether or not a virus is in a solution. So we coat the gold nanoparticles with the virus and then we add things called osmolites to the solution which dehydrate the virus and cause them to destabilize. And then if you have enough virus present, you'll be able to see a color shift in the gold nanoparticles. And then we use another machine to actually measure the size of the clumps together and then the particles on their own. So eventually how we want to implement this is by testing surfaces and how clean they are and then also being able to put them into donated blood samples and make sure that they're pure before we give them to someone else. The research I'm going to be doing in Singapore is trying to isolate EV71 which is a virus-like particle. 
In Southeast Asia, there is a very big outbreak of hand, foot, and mouth disease, and the, these EV71 virus-like particles could be used in a vaccine that would help prevent that and be able to save lots of people. My project specifically is optimizing the upstream portion of the project where we create the virus. What happens is they're surrounded by a ton of like contaminating proteins. And so our job is to remove all those proteins, the extra DNA, so that we just have as pure as possible VLPs for moving on to the next step in the manufacturing process. It's, it's similar to if you were trying to grow a field of strawberries and get the most strawberries out of the same number of plants, except my strawberries are viruses and my plants are hamster cells. Some people might get impatient and think like, why don't you have results yet? But it's like, that's kind of the whole thing with research is that it takes a while and it's a process, but in the end you find new ways to do things. When I first started doing research, I didn't understand the importance of purifying a sample because this is often one of the most difficult parts of research. So we can have good evidence saying that this particular thing is causing another particular thing. That was very vague. <laughs> All of this stuff we do in the lab, it does have an application out there that can affect everybody in their daily lives. There are viruses out there that are currently hurting lots of people and with development and further research we could create solutions to some of these problems and save lives. 25% of deaths in the United States are attributed to cardiovascular disease. Uh, coming up with these solutions takes time and you have to be really careful because just the magnitude of the problem and there are so many potential factors. The problems we're faced with today require interdisciplinary solutions and you can't get to those interdisciplinary solutions unless you're willing to work with people from other fields. If you're hesitant at all about this type of opportunity, I would say just go for it because it was one of the best experiences I've had in my college career and I'm so grateful that I got to go to another country and do research with different researchers around the world. Alright, you guys ready? Say cheese. <laughs>